Howdy Connection Group leaders, happy Thursday. I hope you're doing great. I'm standing here in front of my TV with this fun little graphic uh, just to let you know, hey, the renovation is happening. It's starting not this Sunday, but next Sunday. And we're excited, but that's going to involve some changes. And so, number one, we want to let you know what those changes are. But number two, we want you to help us deliver these changes to your groups. We'll be talking about them this Sunday from the pulpit also. Um, biggest things, October the 9th, uh, that Sunday, that's when we'll start three services. All those are going to be in the loft, which is right up above me. I'm down in my office right now. Um, there's going to be an 8 o'clock, a 9.30, and 11 o'clock. Those of you that go to connection groups at 8 o'clock uh, normally, we're asking y'all to come to worship at 8 o'clock instead. And that's just going to make sure that we have plenty of room in the other two worship services for everyone. It'll be a little bit, not, not unbearably, but it'll be a little bit tighter up in the loft. So that'll just make sure we've got the room that we need. Um, but that day at 9 o'clock, we're going to have a special prayer service in the worship center that I'm excited about. I was telling the students about this last night. That morning, the floors are going to be bare already. And so they are in the worship center. We're going to be gathering to pray over that space and also as families writing scriptures all over the floor. And so I, I would encourage you now and tell your groups this too. If you have a a, a verse that's really meaningful to your family. Take your family to the spot where y'all normally sit and man, write that passage on the floor right there. I think that'd be really, really cool. I'm going to do that with my family. I've got a student that was asking if he could write an entire book of the Bible on the floor. I told him, go for it. <laughs> we'll see if he actually does it or not. But that should be a really sweet Sunday. And then the following Sundays after that, again, we'll still be having three services up in the loft. Uh, the, those of you that have connection groups at 8 o'clock, y'all will have your groups at 9.30 at that point. We've got space set aside for you. Um, for the rest of you, normal time frames, again, worship just in the loft instead of in the worship center, and uh, Kids Rock and all that stuff will be happening as well. So again, uh, help us spread this word. We'll keep reminding you also, but we're pretty excited about what the Lord's doing in, in our facilities and, and the opportunity it's going to give us moving forward. Now, we get to talk about Philippians. Oh, it's so, so good. Philippians 4 is the passage that my, the man that poured into me the most as, as a kid, I, I Golly, probably once, if not twice a month, he would he would ask me, "Hey TJ, have you Philippian for this?" Because I'd bring him stuff that's going on in my life, and he would point me back to this passage. And the reason why is because it applies to everything. It says verbatim, "Pray about everything, everything." And I, I think we need to take that seriously. But a couple of things about this passage. Number one, please don't skip the first three verses. I think there's a lot of value in us talking about the fact that hey. Even in the church of Philippi, the one church where like, Paul didn't have any real complaints, even those people didn't always get along. We are a pretty godly church. The Lord does some great stuff here amongst us, but we don't always get along. And when that happens, um, hopefully we can deal with that just as individuals. But from time to time, we may need to get involved. And that's what Paul's calling the, the, uh, the, the pastor here at, at Philippi to do. Hey, step in, help these two ladies in this dispute and remind them to agree in the Lord. Jesus is what connects us. We can disagree on a handful of things, but but we've got to get along, and the unity of our church matters to the umpteenth degree. So, so let's end this dispute. We as a church family here at the Lake Church, we're going to take that seriously too. So don't skip those verses. But then verses 4 through 9, man, they're huge. Again, they apply to everything. You see that re rejoice again, 16 times the idea of rejoicing or joy is used in the passage. Nine times we're told to rejoice. Let the reverberations of your mouth to the outside world be one of joy. Let the world know that you've got joy. And it's not just like happy-go-lucky, man, I'm just an optimistic dude. I've got joy because I know who my father is and I know who's in charge. And even though I might be going through some pretty hairy stuff, at the end of the day, I've got joy in my life because nothing can change that. That's the thing that we're supposed to be, again, reverberating, rejoice. It's just the idea of reverberating, like joy expressed outwardly. It's a verb. Let the world know that. I had a friend that used to say, Christians notify your faces, right? And like we're supposed to be a people marked by joy that, that should be evident to them, right? So let your gentleness be evident to all the Lord is at hand. Don't miss that. That's a huge, tiny little tidbit, but, but it's what makes it most significant. God is here, he's listening, he cares. And so bring your request to him. Now come with thanksgiving and come with praise and, and rejoice in the process. But let your request be known to God. 
And I would point you back to so many what, what we call the imprecatory prayers uh, in, in Psalms. Man, David just lays his stuff out to God. And sometimes it feels kind of ugly, like, dude, David, calm down, man. But even in those imprecatory prayers, when he's literally, in some cases, he's like asking God to rain down fire from heaven. Even in the midst of those, he always ends with joy. So Paul's doing the same thing here. He's just simply saying, instead of ending with joy, although you should do that, start with joy. Start with thanksgiving. Express your gratitude to God for the fact that he's listening to you. And then, yes, lay out all of your stuff before him because he cares. And then finally, he says, hey, and think about holy things. Think about good things. Think about excellent things. Think about praiseworthy things. The most important thing there, think about truth. We're supposed to be reminding each other of things that are true. Why? And this is maybe the most significant truth would be this. Again, the Lord is at hand. Ultimately, God's in control. And I, my wife and I, we have to remind each other of that all the time. We remind our kids of that all the time. And it's not that the stuff that we're dealing with here on earth isn't hard or it's not real. It is. But we have to remember that truth that the Lord is in control. And he's with us and he cares and he's helping. We need to remember those things and remind each other of those things. Last thing, the last really nine, ten verses are all about generosity. Absolutely talk about that. We always want to be a generous people. But let me just say to you simply this. I, like Paul, am an individual that lives off the generosity of other people. And I, I too, like Paul, I've learned to live with a lot. I've learned to live with a little. I've learned the secret of being content no matter what state, literally what state. I've pointed that out to my students before, whether I'm in Arizona or Arkansas or in Texas. Thank God I get to live in Texas. No matter what state I'm in, I've learned the secrets to being content. That all being said, I am incredibly grateful. And I say this not just for myself, but for my family and for us as a staff. We are so grateful for your generosity, not only of your, your giving to the church so that we can do the jobs that you've given us, but also with your generous generosity with your time and your wisdom and the volunteer hours and all the incredible things that you do to make Lake Church happen. Convey those same things to your groups this Sunday. The generosity that is expressed through our church is advancing the kingdom in amazing ways, and we're grateful. Guys, we love y'all. Have an excellent weekend. We'll see you Sunday. Bye.